The adventure begins with Merlin being our worst sleep paralysis demon as we then wake up to the sound of a really loud alarm clock. Our cat squirrel dog is pissed and jumps away before we can say hello, which honestly hurts way more than it probably should have. We get to the command room where the Type Luminar Reject tells us that some wacky shit is happening in the British Lost Belt that will cause the entire planet to die in about half a day if we don't do anything about it. We get into our car with the rest of the gang and drive through a wall of plot only for about half of everybody to die, but not really. Only us, our eggplant, and Lily Vinci are able to stand, so we set for the mainland where we accidentally summon a sad harp boy. The new gang then tries to find our way in the fog before we all fall unconscious and are teabagged by a mysterious stranger who definitely isn't plot relevant. Before we temporarily die, he tells us not to tell anybody that we're just a regular dude, which we definitely remember. Yep. We wake up in a mysterious shack with our sad harp boy and a new pet dog, who really wants to call us Lysander because we left our name tag at home. The villagers are all fairies and eventually find out that we're just a regular dude, which causes them to f murder each other in cold blood. Average Tuesday in Britain. We escape the village with the help of a mysterious stranger who reveals himself to be Oberon Kenobi, and remember that our name is... We then tell our new pet dog that we're here from another world, which she takes surprisingly well. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, our eggplant loses her oculus and gets adopted by three little goblin boys named Rob, Wag, and Winky. They try to sell her and her armor, but she has the divine protection of a new pet dog, so they politely f for the time being. We head to a town named after a subgenre of steak and eventually meet back up with Lily Vinci and her new best friend Mike. She then tells us what she's learned, which is precisely nothing. Oberon Kenobi goes on a scouting mission and finds a ram ranch out west that might or might not have our eggplant. Figuring that we have nothing else to lose, the gang decides to invade the showers at the ram ranch, but we eventually get stopped by a fairy in horse armor. We kill him, then a hundred more spawn, then the writers give us a small army called the Round Table Wankers. We beat all the horses, but then discover our eggplant is in another castle. Suddenly, a really big dog appears and kills our new best friends. Cool. Our dog then tries to size up the significantly bigger dog, but has little success. We finally get the chance to escape with Lolly Vinci and Castoria after our sad heart boy sacrifices himself in one of the most raw scenes in the entire game thus far. While on the run, Oberon Kenobi meets up with us to take us to our next side quest with the help of a talking horse fairy. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, our eggplant has taken a new, worse name and has befriended her captors using the power of being a protagonist. The gang gets to the next town, where everything apparently works in reverse and everybody has a handshake agreement to not try to kill each other. We split up into pairs with the self-insert master taking our pet dog out window shopping. While out and about, we meet a dominatrix elf fairy who doesn't actually tell us her name. We get to an auction house to hopefully try to find our eggplant, but instead find a grandpa who definitely isn't Shiro. We get in a fight and win when Castoria proves to be better at magic than the elf from earlier. Neat. We head upstairs to meet an elf fairy who definitely isn't one of the Sakura Five. Legally distinct Kazar Drop has employed Evil Not Tamamo, who elicits a visceral reaction from Oberon Kenobi, which then prompts us to leave the city immediately. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, our eggplant and her new best friends get to a castle city, where they plan on selling her off to a bastard Lion King named Bogart. He and his soldiers attempt to intimidate the eggplant, but they fail the charisma checks, resulting in our Kohai revealing how much of a b she is. The Lion King then decides to make her his newest bride, and sends her upstairs where she is adopted by a cat. She then disobeys a direct order and kills some evil shadows outside, which then naturally segues into an existential crisis later that night. Average Tuesday in Britain. The gang goes to the Welsh forest where they are joined by another new puppy dog named Gareth who has been politely stalking us because of how much she admires the prophecy dog. We then trauma dumped in the general direction of Oberon Kenobi who basically tells us, Ayo, that's life hoss, hope you find your eggplant, before going on a marathon sprint across the country. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, war has broken out in our eggplant's castle city. After the evil goblin boy sold them out a little bit earlier, the Lion King uses the big fucking gun Mash brought and she cries as the city is destroyed. Still, she gets back up because she's secretly the best character in Lost Belt 6, and it isn't close. Ayo, hey, uh, Dean from the future here. Uh, I was wrong. It's actually Oberon Kenobi. Love that man. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled shitpost. Mash and her new cat mom fight off as many of the knights as possible, but she can only carry so hard before her team FF15s. She's able to get out with Bogart just in time, as the good goblin boys from earlier close the gate behind them. They died, I cried, everything in this Lost Belt sucks. Then, the gang tries to cross the river, but get trolled by a mermaid first. Average Tuesday in Britain. The gang finally makes it to Norwich with the sole goal of killing the acid rain that threatens to destroy the entire city. The next morning, shit starts to go down, so we sprint outside to help contain the calamity. We see our Kohai doing the same thing, but better, up until a giant eldritch monster appears at the harbor. Our dog is stricken with choice paralysis from this admittedly terrifying situation, and Mash runs up to try to fight it head on. She takes its blows for a little bit before we get there and empower her with the power of friendship, causing her to stop being an amnesiac as we completely ace this boss fight. The acid rain then refuses to go away, and it fires a teleport beam at Mash. The party then gets a text message from Morgan that basically tells us, Ayo, hey, come here so we can talk, boys, to which we oblige. The gang is escorted to Camelot by Morgan's pet dog for a nice wholesome sit-down discussion that goes a little something like this. 
Hey, well, thanks for killing that thing in Norwich, but y'all are still pussy ass bitches. Fuck you and everything you fucking stand for. You are garbage and will always be garbage. Here's $100 million. Now, fuck off. Can I have my eggplant back? No. Okay. We then leave Camelot to meet the next tame character. Oh, no shot. Dude, it took me two years to learn how to pronounce Uriley and three years to learn how to pronounce Maeve. That, no shot. We learn that she is actually good friends with our dog. Such good friends, in fact, that she attempts to fight us to the death in the name of creating superficial conflict that is required by the nature of this being a video game. After we get not Maeve to politely f*** off, we head down to Londinium, where our adopted pet dog is adopted by Percival, aka my husband. He gives us the rundown of what all the roundtable wankers have been up to before we find a religious painting and decide to retake the Holy Land. Camelot. Our eggplant. The test I failed in 8th grade. The line I messed up in the last session. Norwich? We head up to Norwich to kill some dudes and ring the Bell of Prophecy. Spriggan, being the rat bastard he is, tries to out mind game us right up until the very moment our dog gets tired of his b****. And rings the bell. Morgan officially declares war on us and our dogs, and gives marching orders on both Londinium and a mysterious second location, where she sends her most favoritist dog. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Mash wakes up in the distant past and is surprised to see definitely not Habitrot and definitely not Castoria there to greet her when she wakes up. That's pretty much it. Our dog has a nightmare about her alternate reality self before the gang eventually gets a message that Oberon Kenobi's forest is being attacked by Morgan's pet dog. We then go on a mad dash to get there, but we're too late, as the Welsh Woods are already burned down by the time we get there. We fight Barghest, and Kenobi is playable for the first time. My husband has a run-in with Kana from Dragon Maid before she ultimately pieces out because plot. When the party decides it's time to head back to Londinium, Oberon Kenobi hangs back so he can be emo about all of his friends dying. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Mash and her new best friends are giving the reader an exposition dump before Not Castoria decides to make Mash go repelling. We eventually arrive back at the Roundtable Wanker's city, right in the middle of a werewolf siege. The battle starts and things aren't looking good until they are, but it's all in vain as Woodwos kills my husband, my dog, my daughter, my daddy, and then me. Pepe sends some of his new best friends to help us out, and Gareth helps save the day against Woodwos because of some fortune-telling bull****. She also has an armor now. Have I mentioned how much I love her? My husband follows the mortally wounded dog and puts him out of his misery, revealing to the audience that he was, in fact, Percy's dad the whole time. Cool. The gang then goes to Stakeville and rings another bell to give our dog a much-needed power-up, and Evil Not Tomorrow reveals to the reader that she vored Bargain's army. Average Tuesday in Britain. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Ace tells Mash that the Isle of Britain is actually made up entirely out of the corpses of dead fairies before she goes repelling. Once down there, she finds a lot of smoke and a nice, fluffy, smiling face that belongs to a wholesome god named Kenunas. After Mash dies and then gets better, Not Castoria exposition dumps about my husband's spear. The gang gets an invitation from Not Kazradrop to go to a lovely Not Sus Ball. There we encounter that one butterfly NPC from earlier and Lancelot, who reveals that she is my husband's big sister, making her my sister-in-law? I guess? We also go out to the balcony and talk to Morgan's now abandoned pet dog, who essentially asks us if she can join our party without asking us if she can join our party. We then go back inside to ring the bell, but are stopped by two times League of Legends champion Beryl and his wife's daughter who is also his side piece. After getting our dog a brand new hat, we engage in a 2v2, which we win because Castoria is f***ing broken. The city of Gloucester then laughs at Tristan, revealing her to actually be Balban Sith. She gets laughed on stage, and Beryl Damwon Gaming pieces out. We ring the bell and leave the town, but before we do, the self-insert confronts Oberon Kenobi about how Morgan's army was control alt deleted from the Londinium Siege, to which he reveals that he not only told not Tamamo to devour them, but he, yeah, he, he, might, be, he might be sus, we gotta keep an eye on this one. He apologizes, which we accept, and then we go about our day as the NPC's exposition dump to the reader. The gang decides to split the party, which has never gone wrong in the history of fiction ever. Once my husband, our dog's pet dog, and Oberon Kenobi all go back to Londinium, the rest of us say we're going to Orkney, but actually go to Manchester so that we confirm that Clifford the Big Red Bar guest really wants to join our party. She says yes, but Castoria doesn't trust her as far as she can throw her, and she is not very strong. We get into our horse car and head north where we fight some wars and some ghosts, before one of them tells us that Evil Not Tamamo is hanging out with the corpse of the last real dragon. Tamlin Lancelot appears, tells us her real name, Melusine by the way, and helps us fight off the pink bitch, and then pieces out. Out of nowhere, this weird seamstress cat thing tells us that our eggplant is at the top of the temple, so we push forward until we meet up with yet another dog. Our long-lost wolf dog reveals that he's actually been an avatar for a certain Norse Allfather all along, meaning that our party, in total, consists of us, Lolly Vinci, a dog with a hat and a magical staff, that dog's pet dog, a seamstress cat fairy, a fairy horse dog, daddy, my husband, and an Irish magical dog who's actually been Odin all along. But now, at long last, it's time to get a certain eggplant. Welcome back, Mash. 
The gang then heads south into Edinburgh, where Not Maeve challenges our pet dog to a chocolate making competition, loser giving up their right to the throne. Our dog wins through the power of being a protagonist, even after accidentally creating a sentient chocolate murder monster. Karen is also there. Yo, Dean post again. Uh, can't believe I forgot to script this. Uh, we get abducted by Bob and Sif, do a wacky in the mirror, and uh, have to kill Beryl, but not really, and Pepe dies as a result of it. I am going to commit great crime. I want to call this island. We then regroup with Oberon Kenobi and my husband in Orkney to ring the fifth bell. After finishing that, Castoria realizes that her pet dog is missing, which... Gareth turns into the sixth bell, which Castoria then rings, signaling that it's time for us to go and retake Norwich, the Holy Land, the land about Gareth because I didn't give it enough emotional impact, Londinium, Camelot? The night before the decisive battle, we all just kind of chill and go through the pre-battle tropes, except for Castoria and Oberon, who have a really weird heart-to-heart -heart about lying. Our dog, being a fairy dog, is able to see when people are lying, and she really doesn't appreciate how the butterfly man has just been lying to us the entire time. He responds by essentially telling her that it's chill, and she just needs to relax, man. On the day of the siege, everything goes according to plan until it doesn't. Daddy and the Irish magical dog fight off Tam and Lancelot, Vargas helps us destroy the main gate, we beat one Morgan, then almost die against three Morgans, the other clan heads stage a coup against the real Morgan, and Bob and Sith is thrown into the pit where she becomes best friends with the ancient apocalyptic teddy bear god. Average Tuesday. Following the siege, everything goes to sh rather quickly. Legally distinct Maeve is killed on the day of her coronation by the single worst fairy in this entire Lost Belt, which causes riots to break out across the island. The party manages to get the hell away, just in time to get escorted back to the Shadow Border where Gordolf has a panic attack almost instantly. Everything grows incredibly dire as Vargas becomes Clifford the Big Black Dog, spawning a calamity that burns everything to the ground. But WAIT! A massive teddy bear crawls out of its hole and starts raining curses down upon the island of Britain, killing everything that wasn't already dead and signifying that, yes, everything really and truly has gone to shit. Just when all hope is lost, who else should arrive but our sleep paralysis demon, who escorts a small elite party to Avalon where we'll forge the sacred sword to stand a chance at killing the evil Paddington. Well, in route, the dick wizard gives us a proper exposition dump about the history of the world and the reason why Fluffy is so mad, which basically comes down to all fairies are bad and cannot be trusted. We get to Avalon and help our dog take down her personal demons, which turn out to be actual demons. We, the reader, learn that Castoria was actually one of the single most abused characters in this entire franchise that only held on to life because of this vague promise of a better tomorrow that she got from looking at a star. When we complete the therapy side quest, we get ready to turn our dog into a sword, only for the man who does swords in his sleep to step in at the last second to become the essence of the sword. Merlin rewinds time around the teddy bear a little bit and sends us off with a sword saying cryptic sh** all the way until he dies. We then get back to the surface where we end up going through an entire boss rush. First we get ganked by the Red Dragon Archfiend, which Percival thwarts at the cost of his own life. Then we drop down to take care of Bargus, which Mash kills with the help of her dad and uncle. Then we kill Barrel DRX for being Barrel DRX, all leading to us finally taking down the evil teddy bear. Hang on, this wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. We defeat the evil teddy bear. This Lost Bolt does not deserve to live. We kill the evil teddy bear. Jesus Christ! We kill the evil... We kill the evil teddy bear. Finally! This fight is really hard. We finally kill the evil teddy bear, even if Castoria had to die to do it. Our eggplant gets a gun from her adoptive cat mom, which she promptly uses to kill off Fluffy for good. After the briefest moment of celebration, we turn around and find a giant swarm of insects is about to devour the island of Britain. We turn around and see Oberon Kenobi, who reveals himself to actually have been Darth Vordjern all along. After we get him to reveal some of his backstory, we get vored by the Void Bug, where we're about to be killed by Darth Vortigern when, suddenly, Super Saiyan Castoria appears. Together with her and our eggplant, we manage to defeat the evil Mothman and escape the Void Worm after a convenient drive-by by the Red Dragon Archfiend. Everything resolves nicely, with Gordolf attempting to give a rousing victory speech, Seelan saying some cryptic to nobody in particular, Darth Vortigern dying, and Mash having obtained a new pet cat mom. Even through all of this, the single biggest takeaway from Lost Belt 6 is... Aurora. Outro text. That dog's pet dog, a seamstress cat, a hairy force dog. Yeah? <laughs>